Hello, everybody, uh, and welcome to the Rubber Industry News Hour. My name is uh, Andrea Mirandola, and uh, in the next slides, I will introduce you to, to our company, Hitech Luxembourg, uh, to our product portfolio and uh, offered services. <clears throat> we will focus uh, on testing equipment to characterize carbon black and uh, other rubber fillers. So let's introduce uh, our organization. Hite Luxembourg is a private owned Luxembourg company. We offer high technology solution covering four different business uh, areas. We will focus today on equipment for testing and measuring of physical properties of carbon black and other rubber fillers. The company <clears throat> was founded in 1986 and since then Hitech Luxembourg is operating in the testing equipment field. We are a small or medium enterprise with over 50 employees, most of them engineers or with a technical profile, with different competencies, uh, which cover six main areas, software and ICT, uh, project management, physics, mechanical engineering, electronics, uh, and high frequency. We are customer focused uh, and our objective uh, is to deliver innovative and high added value products and services. The motto of our company is market-oriented, client-centric, and technology-driven. Our company holds several certifications related to the quality management, environmental management, occupational health and safety management system, and social responsibility. We participate in several work groups, and we are active contributors to the ASTM. Our customer base is quite international, and our product find application all over the world in the R&D and quality control labs of all major producers of carbon black, tires and rubber goods. We serve our customer directly from the, our headquarters in Luxembourg, where also our production is located or through a network of local agents and partners. Let's now uh, start to talk uh, in detail about our products uh, and their application. Uh, I would like to <clears throat> uh, note that uh, each of our instruments operates following the principle of one or more ASTM standard test methods. So this is our main reference. The same equipment can also be compatible with the respective uh, test methods published by other normalization bodies, such as ISO or uh, the Japanese uh, industrial standard. <clears throat> when we focus on uh, uh, ASTM, we should uh, uh, precisely look at the Committee D24 on Carbon Black. The committee is organized in subcommittees, and uh, each one of them is focused on a specific topic related to, to Carbon Black. Not all are, are related to high tech um, uh, testing equipment. The ones interesting to our talk are the D2411 on Carbon Black Structure, D2451 on Carbon Black uh, uh, Pellet Properties, and the uh, 2431 on non-carbon black components of carbon black. Uh, we can also find other references that are interesting or related to our equipment within the ESTM in the D11 committee on rubber that you will uh, all uh, know very well, on the T36 committee on recovered carbon black. This uh, last one is uh, a relatively young committee created to support the growing uh, recovered carbon black industry. Recover Carbon Black, or RCB, is a product recovered via thermal decomposition from rubber goods uh, which contain carbon black, uh, basically from end-of-life tires, but not only, and can be used uh, in certain selected applications as a substitute of virgin carbon black. Some of our equipment uh, are used for the characterization of RCB as well. At ITEC, we have a portfolio of eight uh, products in total. Three uh, products are related to the characterization of uh, structural properties. Two uh, units uh, are used for the determination of pellet properties. Three uh, units are used for the determination of sieve residue. Sieve residue is uh, one of the non-carbon black components of carbon black. You will see in detail each unit or each test method. Uh, but at the end, the target is uh, uh, to characterize uh, the material, this material, carbon black, uh, but not only, also other rubber fillers, 
and uh, uh, be able to predict uh, in rubber compound performance or prevent uh, defects. Uh, then you see uh, the first uh, two products, three products are related to, to uh, uh, structure properties. We have the compressed volume structure tester, the DAPS oil absorption basic system, and the carbon black press HCBP. The carbon black press is not exactly a, a testing equipment, uh, it's more a sample preparation tool. We will see in detail uh, what is used for uh, uh, later. Then we have the, the IPHT, individual pellet hardness tester, is uh, used to measure the uh, pellet, individual pellet hardness tester. We have a, a pellet uh, powder mastering tester, so, and uh, uh, the last three uh, units are sieve uh, residue testing devices. We will see also the difference between the different devices in the, in the uh, next slides. Let's talk a little bit about uh, structural properties. <clears throat> Carbon black structure is uh, the quality of irregularity and deviation from sphericity of the shape of a carbon black aggregate. This is the definition that is coming from the uh, ASTM uh, uh, standard. Basically, uh, when we, we measure uh, or uh, we look at the void volume, uh, uh, internal void volume, the aggregates, uh, the greater the measure of the internal void volume, then the more complex, open and branchy the aggregates within the sample are, and the, uh, high, the higher the structure is. Uh, we have uh, uh, two main characterization methods that we can use. We have the oil absorption number, uh, the uh, acronym is uh, OEN, or a void volume analysis. Uh, basically, the difference between the two is that uh, in, in, in one case, uh, the oil absorption, we fill the void volume uh, we mentioned before with uh, a liquid. It is, uh, in this case, uh, uh, oil. We have different type of oils, but uh, it's always an uh, oil-based uh, liquid. And uh, in the void volume, we compress the material and we measure the, uh, the void volume. So we measure the, the, the variation in, in volume of the material. Uh, in uh, industry, we can uh, also find uh, a third method of characterization that is the COEN. So the compressed sample oil absorption number. Uh, and uh, simulates this third method, the typical breakdown carbon black may be exposed during the mixing uh, process with, with the rubber. In this case, uh, the carbon black is first compressed uh, in a press uh, and uh, its structure is measured uh, again uh, using the uh, uh, normal oil absorption system. The difference between the regular oil absorption and the COEN gives you an estimation of the stability of the structure of carbon black, stability uh, uh, during the uh, mixing, uh, mixing process. So here we have uh, some equipment we, we mentioned before. So the OEN, in the OEN test, the oil is uh, added at a, a constant rate uh, to a sample of carbon black. It's used uh, sometimes also for silica, this test method. The mix uh, of carbon black and, uh, and the oil changes uh, from a free-flowing state to a semi-plastic uh, agglomeration with uh, uh, an associated change in viscosity. And with uh, this uh, viscosity increase uh, is, uh, is the trigger that is uh, uh, defining the end of the test. Uh, yes. The volume of oil that we add per 100 gram of mass of carbon black is the oil absorption number. Uh, this, uh, you can see in the picture, is our current version of uh, uh, DAPS oil absorption uh, testing equipment. And uh, uh, it was uh, released in 2021. And uh, compared to the previous version, it's improved in design and ergonomics and uh, complies with the most uh, recent technical safety standard. So we, we did an upgrade uh, in the electronics, uh, in the control uh, units, and also in terms of uh, safety and ergonomics of the machine. Uh, on, the, on the right side, you see uh, the COEN test where the, the carbon black is first compressed uh, at the target pressure of 165 megapascal and uh, uh, in a specific press and then uh, 
uh, it is uh, uh, again measured on the OAN machine. So in this case, uh, you will not need only the, the uh, DAPS, the OAN test, but you will need also a carbon black press. Uh, our carbon black press is a, a hydraulic press engineering for, for this specific purpose and uh, consider it to, to be placed uh, in a lab. Uh, so <clears throat> it's a compact design compared to other presses that you can find on the market or, or uh, mechanical presses uh, adapted for the scope. Uh, and uh, we uh, designed the machine with a particular attention on uh, health and safety aspects. Uh, the compressing chamber is uh, completely confined and uh, uh, accessible opening a transparent door so the operator can control all the compressing operation. And uh, on the back of the machine, uh, we uh, provide also a, a shutter so you can connect uh, uh, the machine to the, to the system of the exhaust in your, in your lab. So this uh, 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 avoid uh, the need of uh, a special wood uh, for the press because the, the compression operation is uh, uh, a bit uh, dusty. It's creating some some uh, dust in the in the environment. Uh, so you need a, a lab hood uh, or uh, in this case uh, where the compression area is all confined, uh, you can uh, you can use the the shutter that we provide uh, as a as a standard. We go to the to the next slide uh, and to the uh, third unit uh, that is used for uh, uh, carbon black uh, structure uh, characterization. In this case, uh, we have a void volume tester, uh, and uh, uh, we and basically we measure the compressed vo uh, volume of a weighted sample as a function of pressure applied. Uh, the standard pressure applied uh, is the 50 megapascal but uh, our equipment can go uh, much higher in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, uh, applied pressure. So uh, for a R&D purpose, uh, a user can, can decide uh, to test also higher pressure. The key features of our avoid volume tester are uh, controlled compression, controlled decompression, uh, which this is a, a feature that uh, HITECH has uh, uh, patented. Um, we have a compression chamber available in a, in a half inch, one inch, and a special one inch for a, a conductivity measurements of, uh, of carbon black. So uh, the standard is normal uh, half inch, but uh, uh, we realize that our customer are appreciating also the one inch because uh, sometimes you have carbon black in fluffy materials and, uh, and not in pelleted, uh, and uh, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, much more convenient to have a a bigger compression chamber to fit a larger volume of material. With our equipment, you can, you can measure void volume versus applied transmitted or geometric mean pressure. The residual void volume, which is correlated to COAN structure, material friction losses, which are reflecting in some way NSA and STSA surface, and uh, with a special uh, um, option, uh, you can also measure the electrical conductivity of carbon black, which is really interested, uh, interesting for carbon black producer, uh, which are also operating in the, in the uh, battery uh, business. It's not uh, really interesting for rubber, but uh, for battery business is uh, quite interesting. Also the tires producer are interested in this feature, I must say. We go now to the uh, through the pellet properties. Uh, uh, the main uh, or the most important uh, characteristics of a pellet is the pellet uh, individual pellet hardness, uh, which is defined as the force required to fracture or crash a carbon black pellet. This is an important characteristic in rubber processing because uh, uh, it's uh, influencing the processability of carbon black uh, uh, filled compounds. So when you, uh, in your compound, you will have uh, uh, two hard pellets, uh, they are not breaking uh, uh, properly during the mixing and, uh, and uh, in generating uh, a bad dispersion. And when they, these pellets are too soft, uh, they can be in carbon black cluster or smashed powder during the, the compounding or during the transportation and uh, uh, generating a possible congestion of the conveyor system or also in this case, uh, uh, a poor dispersion uh, in the uh, compounding uh, process. 
Uh, the second characteristics uh, when we speak about pellet properties, the, the mass strength. Mass strength is the measure of the tendency of carbon black uh, pellets to pack together and to influence the flowing in a, in a bulk uh, handling system. This characteristic is affected by pellet hardness, size, shape, and especially by fine contents. When you go on the specific uh, on the test method uh, to measure the uh, pellet hardness, uh, the sample uh, needs to be first sieved to, to collect uh, uh, a certain fraction on the uniform size, uh, say between 1.4 and, and uh, 1.9 millimeters. Uh, the sample is then transferred uh, into the tester and uh, uh, the tester is collecting each single pellet uh, and each single pellet is pressed against a force capital system. Under the pressure applied, the pellet will either break with a uh, rapid force drop or will uh, reduce in, in diameter. Uh, the individual pellet hardness is the maximum force prior to this force drop we mentioned, or when it's not breaking, uh, when the diameter is, uh, is uh, uh, reducing uh, until the 90% of the initial diameter, whichever of the two conditions come, come first. Our equipment uh, is, uh, uh, let's say, an equipment with, uh, that is reflecting uh, uh, more than 25 years of experience in the construction of a pellet harness tester. And uh, is this uh, the last version that was, uh, which was released in 2018-2019 uh, in, uh, and the coming mounted on a, on a damping table, uh, which reduced the influence of industrial vibration on the uh, precision of the measure and uh, is integrated uh, with a uh, sample carousel, which uh, can uh, allow the operator to, to load on the machine uh, 14, uh, up to 14 samples uh, and measure up to 14 samples without uh, operator intervention. The output plot of this equipment are, are the pellet hardness uh, and the pellet diameter. And uh, of course, you will have also statistics about uh, the pellet characteristics. Uh, basically, you, you normally measure uh, the standard uh, is uh, an average of 50 pellets uh, or an average of 20 pellets. So you will get uh, uh, as an output, the average, uh, the hardest uh, 10%, uh, three or five pellets, uh, and the softest pellet, uh, and uh, uh, you get also the uh, individual data for each single pellet measured. This is uh, what you get in the, on the uh, test report of each measurement. Uh, we go to the, to the uh, carbon black pelleted mass strength. Uh, this test is, uh, the machine is, uh, let's say it quite simple because it's a standalone machine, uh, tabletop size, uh, which do not require any, any uh, control PC because uh, all the function and operation are controlled via control panel, uh, control panel and a uh, seven inch uh, display that you can see on the, on the picture. Uh, in this uh, test, uh, the carbon black uh, sample is placed in a compression chamber and is pressed with a, with a plunger for 10 seconds after which the bottom of the compression chamber is open. Basically, you, you, you can fill this uh, uh, cylinder with material you compress and then the end you open this, uh, this drawer at the end of the test. Uh, you have then uh, two options. In the first option, the material is, is uh, flowing freely. So uh, that means that you, you didn't reach your, your pack point. Uh, and then you have to repeat uh, with different setup of pressure until a ring or a bridge is created uh, inside the compression chamber. So when you, when you are able to uh, pack completely or partially uh, your material means that your uh, packing point or uh, uh, is, uh, is uh, reached. Uh, the force you have used to, to reach this result expressed in, in Newton is called the mass strength. We have then uh, the uh, product uh, uh, for sieve residue testing. Uh, there are uh, many uh, tests and parameters uh, which are related to non-carbon black components of carbon black. Uh, ITEX products uh, falling in this category are related only to the sieve residue determination. That is also in the, in the jargon uh, uh, vocabulary is called also grid content. 
Uh, basically, is uh, the sample is washed or flushed via, via with water through a wire mesh screen, uh, which can have different sizes uh, uh, agreed uh, between a uh, uh, supplier and and, uh, and buyer, or uh, just on the on the uh, choice of the um, supplier. Until uh, so, this uh, um, sample is washed until all that remains is a non-carbon black residue. The residue uh, or the sieve is conveniently dried in a, in a uh, stove or oven, uh, and uh, and uh, the weight is taken. And uh, the sieve residue of the original sample is the material that is left after washing and after drying. And this is expressed in a milligram per kilogram or a, a ppm. Uh, this sieve residue data is important because it may relate to the surface uh, appearance of mechanical properties uh, or also the mechanical properties of, uh, of the compound. Uh, in some cases also considered uh, uh, originated by contaminations. So when, when the case uh, further analysis can, can be uh, conducted to determine uh, what is the, the, the origin of this uh, uh, contamination. And uh, the carbon black uh, uh, manufacturer can have uh, uh, also some indication about the status of his uh, production process or, or equipment. You see here, uh, I, I put in two categories. We have three, three different apparatus for sieve residue. Uh, two apparatus are for carbon black uh, in rubber application. The uh, commercial names of these two apparatus are A2000 and the NDA VACU. And uh, uh, the one on the right uh, is uh, uh, not related to rubber application, is uh, uh, originally created for pigments, but uh, it is uh, commonly used uh, also for uh, uh, rubber filler that which are not carbon black, for example, silica or for other uh, rubber um, components uh, like uh, zinc oxide or uh, titanium dioxide on the, uh, any other powder material, let's say that. So it's uh, the most uh, universal uh, among the, the three products. Let's see then, what is the difference between A2000 and the AVACO? So if both equipment are uh, uh, supposed to be uh, used in rubber, uh, carbon black for rubber application, uh, why should I take uh, or, uh, or uh, adopt uh, one or the other? Uh, the A2000 is working with a principle that is uh, uh, described on the ASTM D1514 and uh, where the, the material is uh, washed through a sieve. It's a very compact dimension and it's a small machine, it's just uh, less than 50 kilos. And the sample you can, you can measure uh, is uh, uh, 100 grams. Uh, the sieves have a, a, a small diameter, is a uh, 50 millimeters, and we have a uh, three uh, different kind of sieves. Uh, the plastic sieves, uh, so uh, is, a, is a stainless steel mesh, but with the plastic ring. We have a, a stainless steel ring and a, a stainless steel ring with a hempa tongue. Uh, this uh, method is used for carbon black for, for general rubber application. The second uh, equipment, the NDA vacuum, uh, is, uh, is more recent. Uh, the first edition of the test method uh, is uh, uh, 2011. And the test method uh, uh, we refer to is the ASTM D7724. It's a relatively big machine. And uh, one of the advantages is that uh, in this case, uh, you can uh, uh, measure a bigger sample of material. So starting from 500 grams, that is the, the standard uh, uh, according to the test method, up to approximately one kilogram. We have also bigger sieves in this case, which have a, a diameter of 400 millimeters. This test method <clears throat> was uh, developed initially for carbon black, uh, used in, a, in a, a, a mechanical rubber grades uh, application. And the NDA vacuum is a useful tool to predict uh, uh, surface defects uh, uh, caused by insufficient dispersion of carbon black uh, uh, of uh, APDM extruded profile. So uh, the uh, mechanical rubber grades or mechanical rubber uh, goods uh, industry is, uh, is uh, uh, likely adopting uh, the vacuum while the uh, general rubber application is uh, likely adopting the, the A2000. 
uh, together with the machine, we, we are able also to, to offer uh, uh, sieves of different size, starting from uh, 20 to 800 micron. Uh, and uh, we can also offer a certification of the, uh, of the uh, sieve mesh provided by the, the fabricant of the, of the mesh. Uh, <clears throat> at ITEC, we also consider the customer experience, the customer service, and after the service, an important part of the success of, uh, of our business. And the services are important as, a, uh, as, as important as the product. Uh, we act accordingly and, uh, and uh, we are able to offer uh, custom tailored services. This can be uh, commissioning and startup of the machine at customer uh, premises, uh, can be training offered uh, uh, online at the customer premises, uh, can be uh, maintenance, uh, preventive uh, or, or uh, uh, troubleshooting. And uh, in some cases uh, uh, where we, we already have uh, experience, uh, it can be uh, custom development. Our main markets, uh, you, you can imagine, are carbon black, tiles and rubber, uh, recovered carbon black is a growing market, and silica and other fillers. In case you have uh, any question, feel free to ask uh, in, the, in the discussion of, uh, after the, the presentation, or uh, uh, you can uh, uh, text me, you can uh, search on our website, uh, we have a uh, uh, itech.lu slash uh, testing uh, uh, technologies or we have shop.itech.lu uh, uh, you have this uh, email sales uh, at itech.lu where you, you can uh, uh, type your question and, and ask and uh, we have a, a great network of local partners uh, especially in, in India uh, where we have a local partner in China, India, Korea, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Taiwan, Thailand and Turkey but uh, not only. Uh, thanks for to everybody for uh, for your attention.